In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we talk all about nutrition, how you should eat if you want to burn body fat or build muscle. I mean, we break it all down for you. We talk about you know all the, the aspects of nutrition that are important. We talk about calories, why that's where you should probably start. And then we talk about proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Now, look, we did something uh, for you guys that uh, we've been working on for actually a very, very long time. Um, a lot of coaches and trainers will charge you to figure out, help you figure out how many calories you burn, how many calories you should eat, your grams of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Well, we wanted to give you that stuff for free. We think this should be available to everybody for free where you could go in, enter your information, and figure out where you should start. So we put together several pages on the internet, several uh, landing pages or, or pillar pages, we should call them, with lots of connecting information. And when you go on these, there are macro calculators. You enter in your information. You can put in your weight, your body fat percentage. It'll tell you how many calories you're burning. It'll tell you how many calories you burn with activity. It'll tell you how many calories to eat based on your goal, grams of protein, grams of carbs, grams of fat. So you can actually go to mapsmacro.com and enter the information, learn all about nutrition, get more detailed information, all the stuff that'll help supplement what you're going to listen to um, in this episode. Now, if you eat right, your macros are good, and you're still noticing issues with energy, you're still noticing maybe some hormone issues, well, you may have some issues with your micronutrients, your vitamins and minerals, or you may have some hormone issues. There are some ways you can test for this. Now, one way is to go to the doctor, get a prescription, go to a lab, get your blood drawn, or you can do a test at home. Now, we work with a company called Everly Well. They produce some of the best at-home tests uh, available for very, very low prices. So you can test things like your vitamin D or your testosterone or your estrogen. You can even get a general idea of maybe some food intolerances that you may have with tests as well. Now, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 15% off any of their tests. Just go to everlywell.com. That's E V E R L Y W E L L.com. And then use the code Mind Pump to get 15% off any test. Now, if your goal is fat loss, if you want to burn a lot of calories, one of the best ways to work out is with high intensity interval training. Okay, these are intense ways of working out, but they burn a ton of calories. Now, we wrote a program called MAPS HIT. That design, it's it's an entire program that is very effective. It's designed to be effective. It's done with barbells and dumbbells. It's essentially a program designed to burn tons of calories, but not cause you to lose any muscle. If anything, you'll sculpt and shape your body with this program. We put it on 50% uh, off sale, so it's half off. Here's how you get that discount. Go to mapshit.com, that's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com, and use the code HIT. 50. That's H I I T five zero. No space for the discount. And again, I want to remind everybody: if you want to figure out your calories, you want to figure out your proteins, your fats, and your carbs, and how many calories you're burning, go to mapsmacro.com. That's M A P S M A C R O dot com. Go check it out. Go read all the information. We think it's really going to help you out. You guys have heard uh, people say that. Like what is it like seventy percent of your success in fitness is your diet? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, yeah, many, yeah. how many times have you guys heard that? Right. What's that quote of like you know you make all your progress in the kitchen? Oh, you, know, you don't get your abs in the gym. Yeah, you, you don't get your abs in the gym. Exactly. You know, there's so there's Some, a little bit of truth. to I was that. gonna say there's there's, yeah, there's there a is. lot there's a lot of truth to that. I think that it's one of those things in the space that you know was probably neglected, and because it was neglected, you know, so much came out to to prove like the importance of it. And that's where I think the numbers started coming of like 70, 80, I've heard yeah. everything, 90%. I've heard 80, all I, of, yeah. I think what the, what it, what it, the, where it's true is not necessarily the impact it has on, on health um, because exercise and fitness and training has a very, very big impact as well. I think it's be, people say that 70 or 80% number because it's the amount of, if you look at all the effort you put into improving your health, building muscle, burning body fat. Um, most of the effort tends to have to go to nutrition because it's the hardest part. Yeah, That's yeah. the reason. I mean, when you work out, you know, even if you work out five days a week, you're working out an hour mm -hmm. five days a week. You eat throughout the day, every single day. It's a part of who you it's are. It's a constant lifestyle thing. It's, it's a lifestyle you eat with other people. It's not, you know, it's, it's a part of our culture. 
it's very difficult uh, to, to change eating habits um, and to figure out what to eat long term. Far more difficult than it is to figure out you know, what kind of workout you should do, which is also hard. It just takes more effort. Well, especially when you're talking about how to burn body fat or how to build muscle. Like There is a difference between just intuitive eating and trying to be healthy like you're alluding sure. to right now. And then there's somebody who says, Adam, I want to build 15 pounds of muscle or mm-hmm. Adam, I want to shed 30 pounds of fat off my body. Like when you have a very specific goal like that and and you've struggled most of your life to get there, to me, this is where this this has a ton of weight that it mm-hmm. is 70, 80 percent because sure, I can put you on a great workout routine and make you a lot more healthy than what you are. Like if you were not working out, you weren't doing anything diet wise, you come to me and you just say, I want to be healthy. You know, if that person just makes a few better changes, they they pay attention to their sleep, they eat a, eat a little bit better than what they were for, I get you on a good program, I can dramatically change your overall health. Mm-hmm. I can make you a much healthier person than what you were before you found me. But if you have goals where you say, I want to do that, I want to build this or change my body, mm-hmm. you know, in addition to being healthy, this I think is everything. This is where the this is where the numbers really start to matter, in my opinion. Totally. Yeah. I, I know as a trainer, this used to always uh, at first I thought people were purposely uh, being deceitful. <laughs> you know, and I think all most early trainers think this. They think, oh my clients lying that they think that they whatever. But the reality is we're so unaware, and this is it took me some years to figure this out, but when you would ask people, how much do you think you eat? Do you eat a lot of sugar? Uh, do you eat a lot of processed foods? Are you getting adequate protein? People are so off. Yeah. Oh from, my god. Yeah. From reality. Hey, not just people. I am. Oh we, yeah. We are. Oh yeah. everybody. That's why I'm. I'm like so passionate about talking about calculating and figuring out what your macro should be. Is because t- twenty years later, been doing this forever. Very, very in tune with what I could look at a plate and give you a pretty good guesstimation if someone challenged me, like, what do you think that is calorie wise and grams mm-hmm. of protein? Mm-hmm. I can do that, right? Pretty mm-hmm. well. And yet, if I am not tracking or if I'm not really, really diligently paying attention uh, every single time that I start and then I, I like reflect on what I thought I was doing, I'm always off. Yep. It's just yep. a matter of how much I was off. And Luckily, from years and years of experience, it's not as I'm not as gross of an offender as I was before. But that just always tells me that listen, if if this is my profession, I live and breathe this shit, and I still estimate quite a bit off when I think I'm doing whatever I think I'm doing. That me that tells me all of my clients what I, are off. What I find that's funny is that people um, can. By the way, there's studies on this. They've done lots and lots of studies on this, and people. Uh, tend to, on a consistent basis, uh, underestimate how many calories they eat. And it's usually by a big number. So somebody will say, I think I eat about 2,000 calories a day, and it's probably around 27, 2,800, maybe even 3,000 calories. That's how big of a number of people are off. And overestimate on how active they are. Right. right. That's I was just going to say that. And then when you ask people how active they are, and they're like, oh, I'm I'm pretty active. You know, I do a 30 minute walk at this time and that time. And then you, that's I, the one thing they did that day. Yeah. I remember yeah. when, when those body bugs first came out and I would have people track their activity levels, even on the days that they worked out, they were super inactive uh, because they thought of the workout as being lots of activity, but really the rest of the day, they weren't doing yeah. anything at all. Protein intake. They would always overestimate. Oh, I eat plenty of protein. I think I eat about 100 grams. And then we would track. Like, you're at 30. Yeah. You know, it's one third of what you thought you were well, eating. Well, it was funny because most people that would come in and, and you know, we talk about nutrition and they'd be like, well, I, I eat healthy. I eat salads. And that's like where the, the conversation ended. Mm-hmm. It was just the fact that like they incorporated salads within their routine that, that made them healthy. And it's just, it, it, it spans all the way across the board in terms of like what people know is healthy not only just healthy, but like, you know, in terms of like how many calories they're ingesting, they have no clue. No, we don't have any clue. A big reason for this, by the way, is we just never learned uh, how to look at food this way. We never learned how to value food for all of the different things that it provides us. Most of us uh, who are lucky enough to grow up in a in a modern society, um, we learn to value food mainly for one thing, which is how it makes me feel emotionally or how well it tastes. I mean, that's pretty about it. That's pretty much it, right? If you think about all the times you go out and eat with your friends or you choose what to eat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, be honest with yourself. And the things you tend to think about are, hmm, what am I in the mood for? What tastes good? Yeah. You know, oh, we're going to go eat. What's going to be fun to eat? Or, hey, this makes me feel better when I'm stressed out or sad or what tastes really good. 
So all of our value is placed on that. So we've never really learned how to look at food in different ways. And so it becomes it's when you're trying to burn body fat or build muscle or change your body, if you don't have the right information and make yourself aware first, you are going to live in the unconscious incompetence stage. You are literally blind. It is, yeah. it is, you're totally guessing the entire time. And this is true uh, for most people. Oh, and not only are you guessing and, and off for the reasons that we talk about over uh, estimating your activity level, underestimating calories, then you have outside forces that are working against you. And we've talked about this before on the show with like labels. And then I used to love to show clients like, do you guys remember seeing those uh, like uh, graphs or charts to, to show, um, you know, a, a burger, fries and a soda in the 50s? Yeah, and in the seventies, and then the nineties, and then like today, the portions mm -hmm. just got enormous. Oh my god, the portions have just in a in a in a few decades has like tripled mm -hmm. in the amount of calories and servings. And when that when that happens over the course of decades, and and we we just kind of let it naturally evolve like that. A lot of people just don't even notice it. You don't yeah. even notice that because you, it, that's what tells you a serving, right? It just becomes the norm. I mean, I, I remember as a kid. You guys remember it was in our generation that like the big gulp was invented. <laughs> yeah, you know, like that was that wasn't oh a my God. yeah. Like if you were a kid, super big gulp. When, when soda pop was, you know, soda pop's been around forever, yeah. but it, it was always a little eight. To twelve ounce thing, that was it. Max, every we should call it soda pop still. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, some places still. do call it pop still. <laughs> I right? think that's so, East Coast, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. and North too, right? Yeah, I think so, oh, okay. right? But I mean, that that's just one example of something that has snuck up on us over the last couple of generations. Yeah, that you know, our parents, you know, when they would have pop, they would literally only be drinking that eight to twelve ounces. That's just how it worked. Like you would have to crush the whole six pack to get what a what a big gulp is today well even in you know people that are going into the gym and they, they start this whole momentum of like trying to get back in shape and all this stuff they think they need a protein shake to add in to what they're already doing <laughs> instead of eliminating yeah. things and then like so there's just lots of misconceptions in terms of like you know what the health community is promoting it's like there's all this excess stuff you need to be taking and and the other big one for me was always to to peer into snacks and and one of them that always snuck in was nuts, like how calorie dense these nuts were that contributing to the overall calorie amount. People had no idea it was like that much. Oh, a serving of, of almonds when people have a snack, it's like 12 or 13 yeah. almonds. Who eats 12 or 13 almonds <laughs> for a snack? Yeah. Most of us grab a whole handful and so you're having three times the serving that you think. And yeah. this, and you're right, this is a big part of the problem because you grow up uh, you know, understanding what you think a serving is. So, so you're never really fully aware of what's going on. It goes even further than what we're talking about with, you know, serving sizes. It even goes to traditional natural foods, right? The average chicken breast in the 1950s was half the size yeah. of the average chicken breast today. You can actually Google this. Look up the the, si the average chicken size in the 50s yeah. and then look at it through the decades. Now, what we've done is we've... You know, uh, we've bred them to be much bigger. We've bred you chickens. Injected them with sauce. Yeah, and they're just they're just they're like dinosaur chickens compared. Yeah, yeah. they're to yoked. The, the ones we have. Same thing with a, a sweet potato or a potato or a banana or corn. All of these things have been over time changed to become you know fruit. Even when you go to the grocery store and you buy fruit, um, and you're like, wow, this fruit is so delicious and so sweet. What you don't realize is over time. Farmers have bred the fruit to contain more and more sugar because it tastes better. Now, there's nothing necessarily wrong with this, but the point is that our serving sizes, how much we're eating, is totally our, – our concept of it, for the most part, is totally off. And so we're guessing this entire time how hard it that, – does, that, does it make – losing body fat or building muscle. I got something that will blow everybody's mind if they've never done this, because uh, I have, and it blew my mind. I've shared on the show about the the, the paradigm-shattering moment I had with the sweet potato. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Uh, Years went by of me just... You know, using my my calorie king book to like guesstimate like back oh, in the, the day. Yeah, this is a you know a sweet mm -hmm. potato that's about 180 calories or what like that. And I just you know every sweet potato I had for the next five years was you know oh, 180 200. Calories. It says medium size. This is medium size. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then I put it on on uh, you know the scale and actually weigh out what the ounces or grams was to figure out what it was. And I was like, holy shit, that was three times more than I thought. You want another one that it will blow your mind because you brought up fruit, a banana. A large banana 
Okay, what is in the grocery store are not large bananas. They're fucking super dinosaur bananas, like you're saying. <laughs> the, the, you know what's a large banana? The porn stars. The of large the bananas, bananas are those like little, the Ron Jeremy those bananas. little tiny bananas. Yeah, I know. So when you look at like what the books tell you, like oh, like a, a large banana is 32 grams of sugar. It's about 160 calories. No, that. no. That's like the little fucking mini banana. That the jumbo banana most people are biting into is like four x that. So <laughs> next time you're gonna eat a banana, just for shits and giggles, throw that thing on the scale. Scale, weigh it out and then take the time just to look up to get an idea it'll blow your mind it will yeah, yeah. and, and you know, a banana that size they can be up to like 50 60 grams of sugar i know yeah. i would tell clients to stay under 50 grams of sugar in their total for the day uh -huh. and a banana can just like go up beyond that right away now it has other health benefits to it so yeah there's not nothing necessarily wrong with a banana but here's the bottom line the bottom line is if you and you cannot get around this okay by the way this is not the only thing that's important and i think we talk about this a lot on the podcast, if, if you've listened to us for more than three episodes, you know we talk about all the different values and all the important aspects that revolve around food that have that have nothing to do with calories. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you want to lose weight, you have to eat less calories than you burn. And if you want to gain weight, you have to eat more calories than you burn. This is a rule. This is a law of physics. Yeah, it's not going to change. You know, I remember a, a long time ago, I had a client that, you know, she we would she really wanted to lose weight, really want to lose body fat. And I worked with her for a little while and, and I would always talk to her, you know, we should probably have you track because I think you're, 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 you're not calculating things right and this and that. And she refused. And I said, fine, I never force people. But she would, she was gaining body fat. And she said, well, this is not possible. She's like, I'm gaining body fat, but my food intake is going down and I'm moving more. And I remember distinctly having this conversation with her and saying, okay, if you're gaining body fat and you're eating less calories than you're burning, what we need to do is study you. We need to take you to a university. <laughs> you're an anomaly. Because you are creating energy. You're creating tissue out of thin air. What you're doing is is nothing short of a miracle. Probably a breathitarian. Yeah. So we need to we need to study this. And that's because again, you can if you're eating more calories than you're burning, what this means is every time you consume calories, right? This is energy. Calories are just a unit of energy. It's how we measure how much energy is within uh, the food that we eat. If you're eating two thousand calories a day and you're only burning one thousand calories a day, that extra thousand calories doesn't just disappear. Yeah. It gets stored. It gets transferred. So one mm -hmm. of the one of the laws of, uh, of of physics is that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So when I light a piece of paper on fire and that paper you know burns and then it disappears, the energy didn't disappear. The energy was converted into heat through the fire, okay? So when you're eating extra calories, those calories, regardless, you can have the healthiest diet in the world, by the way. It can be a very, very healthy diet. It can have lots of whole foods and you know, uh, fruits and vegetables and good, you know, high quality meats. But if you're eating more calories than you're burning, your body is going to store those extra calories. So you cannot lose weight unless your calories are lower than you burn, and you cannot gain weight unless your calories are higher than you're burning. And you this, just can't get around that. And this is what makes uh, strength training and trying to build muscles such a beautiful thing, is because that is exactly right. And most people are so off and underestimate. And so at least. Some of those additional, you know, the thousand calories on it, we turn hope, into muscle. We yeah, hope shuttled get muscle. Par yeah partitioned over into building muscle, and that is extremely beneficial for your overall metabolism and also combating putting on any sort of body fat. That's what makes strength training so amazing. Where if it's just a calories in, calories out thing, cardio helps you burn. Walking around helps you burn anymore. But if you go over still that, it does nothing for you at that mm -hmm. point. It, it, you still will get body fat if you go over. Where if I sent a signal to my body to build muscle because I strength train properly, there's a good chance that at least some, if not all, hopefully, of those calories get partitioned over. Now, to and muscle. I'm glad you said that because it's it's also a little bit more complex, right? Just because you build more muscle, let's say you gain three pounds of muscle, it doesn't necessarily mean the only extra calories you're burning are the calories that are needed to support that muscle. That's true, but there's also more. Your body actually can become more or less efficient with calories. Part of that is through how it takes these calories and also turns them into heat. Yeah. And people with more muscle, or if your body's trying to build muscle, your body l becomes less efficient with calories, doesn't try to hold on to them as much, and burn some of them in the form of heat, which is which you could consider to be less efficiency. But again, at the end of the day, if you don't know how many calories you're burning and you don't know how many calories you're consuming, 
you are walking around in a dark room blindfolded. You have no idea where you're going. You oh, at, at best, what you do is you could look at the scale, look at your body, try to adjust your food here and there. But it is a very, very big guessing game. And here's the big problem with that. And I used to run into this all the time with clients is that they would do that and not realize that during the week, they would do very, very good with the nutrition in terms of you know caloric intake. Saturday and Sunday, according to them, they'd be like, well, I just... I went off a little bit. It wasn't that big of a deal. I, breakfast and lunch, I did like I normally do. And then dinner, I went out with my friends and had a little bit. Yeah. What isn't that much more? But when we would go there and calculate it all, we would find very consistently, this is a super common thing, that the extra calories they had on the weekend made up for all the, the calorie deficit they had during the week. So they would end up breaking even or sometimes even eating a little extra because of that weekend and really screwing themselves over. So this is something you, you cannot get around. And again, we are the biggest proponents of eating healthy, the behaviors around food, how food affects your energy levels, your health, your muscles, your hormones, bone, all that different stuff. But you cannot get around the fact that your that calories ultimately will determine weight gain or weight loss. And so this is something you need to know. Um, it's an important thing to know. And so one of the first steps that you know we I, I tell clients to do, or one of the most consistent steps if they're ready, is to learn how to Figure that out. Yeah. Right. Let's start to track. Log your food. Let's start to track and figure that out. Now, calories being the big important thing, now that we've got that out of the way, what makes up those calories largely determines how you feel. So think about it this way, right? Um, you're eating the right amount of calories to accomplish your goal, but what your calories are made up of um, are not balanced, proteins, fats, and carbs. You're, 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 the foods are making you feel either low energy or, or irritable or getting more cravings. Um, is this a good long-term strategy? No, it's not a good long-term strategy. So when I hear people comparing like, oh, you know, as long as I'm on my calorie deficit, but you know, most I have tons of sugar, that's okay because I'm still going to lose body fat. Yeah, but how do you feel right. eating all that sugar? How do you feel eating in, the, in that unbalanced way? Is that something that's going to benefit you long-term? No. So again, step number one, figure out your calories, figure out what is known as your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, or figure out your total daily energy expenditure. It's otherwise known as TDEE. -E. Now, TDEE -E, uh, takes into account how many calories you burn actively on top of your basal metabolic rate, which is your metabolism. So BMR, how many calories you burn just being alive at rest. TDEE -E counts how many calories you're burning being active on top of that. So that's the best number. I and, would say. and to that point, like this was another one of those paradigm shattering moments for myself. You brought up earlier when uh, the body bug came out, that was like the first, like, like, you know, pretty accurate wearable tool. And something that I was floored by was, you know, when you first log in, they like, they have, they have you fill out all this stuff, like, you know, your weight, your measurements and everything like that. And then it asks you your activity level. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I'm a fitness professional. I work, you know, I'm working out seven days a week yeah. hard for an hour and stuff like that. Like I'm highly active, you know, so I'm going to push it all the way over to highly active. Well, after wearing this thing for months on months and even years, what I started to piece together really quick is like, holy shit, based off of what I'm burning for my size and even with my workouts for an hour every single day, I'm still considered yeah. somebody sedentary. sedentary. Yeah. And that was like another one of those holy shit moments for me because in my brain, you know, I man, I broke a hard sweat today. I trained hard today. I've got to be considered a highly active person. Mm -hmm. But the problem is if the rest of our day we aren't very mobile, we're sitting down at a desk and working all day or sitting in a chair and couch and talking on a mic or whatever it may be, you actually have a very sedentary no, lifestyle, even I with the workouts. I had that same realization because I, I factored in the, that I trained really intense. And so, you know, that had to, to play into the fact that I was very active. And uh, to see actually like the trends throughout my day of like how inactive I was in sitting and sedentary, it was just very eye opening. And it was shocking to me to, to, to think that like, okay, yeah, I do have, you know, this, this crazy amount of activity just in this one little short window throughout the day that's not going to carry me the whole rest of the day and you know i have to factor my calories accordingly no that. unless you you have a job that is very active and what i mean by that is like you work construction blue collar you're a, a mail carrier so you're walking miles and miles every single day the vast majority of the people listening to the podcast right now 90 percent or more of you are at most 
you know, light activity. Uh, you, most of us are not very active throughout the day. Even if you work out for an hour and a half every single day, if your job is at a desk, in your car, if you're maybe just standing, but you're not really doing tons of activity, most of us are pretty sedentary. I, rem I remember vividly when this all came full circle for me, what client I was training, how it all came to be. And I was training client. Her name was Tony. She'd been with me for a really long time. And this was, she had, I had her before uh, the body bug tool came out and then I had her afterwards. And she was one of those great clients that like did everything you told them to, like your favorite client to train because then you could really, you really get to challenge yourself and your knowledge of what, how you can help somebody when somebody does such a good job of giving you the real good feedback, right? And I'll remember sitting down with her after uh, it was on a Monday and we had our, you know, a good week of training and then she had her weekend and then I seen her and we're, we're going over her body bug results, like what, what she'd burned and Cal and everything like that. And I'm looking at the days that I trained her and I know I was, I was kicking her ass. She'd been with me for a while now. She was advanced. We had in, in, ramped up our intensity, our training. And so even as a coach, I was, you know, guesstimating about, okay, when we do this, this is about where we should be. And then she had this like Saturday where she was like double the calories burned than what I on the training session I had with her on Wednesday, and I was like, "What did you do? Are you cheating oh. on me with another yeah. trainer? <laughs> did you train or did you go for a, a, a run forever?" She's like, "No." She goes, and then she starts listing off. Well, you know, I, I was doing some stuff in the garden, and then I actually cleaned the house. It was a beautiful day, and you know, and then I, I had to get some groceries. So I had to go to Costco, and I forgot something, so I had to go back. Yep. And she like starts telling me all, and then she goes, "But I didn't get a chance to work out," and I was like, "Whoa!" Like her calorie expenditure on a non-workout day in uh, in this just this one example was 2x of what it was on an extremely hard training day and so that really enlightened me like what the discrepancy of people trying to figure out the calories they're burning and intaking can be because she may in her head those are all like not hard activities for her that's part of her lifestyle now she doesn't do that every single day but in in her brain just like the way mine would be operating is I would think because I didn't train hard that day, this was a, not a high calorie burn day. So yeah. those things have got to be figured out and factored in and the tracking piece and figuring it out, you know, and at least following it for a while. So you start to learn your behaviors, I think is extremely essential to somebody who has goals. If you have goals to really move and change your body, totally. If you just want to be healthy. You want to make better decisions. You can strength train, make some adjustments in your diet, and you can be a pretty quote unquote healthy person. But if you have goals, I want to lose body fat, and, and you're serious about that, and you want to change that, or you want to build a certain amount of muscle, this is this is well, tantamount. to that point too. Uh, we this is why we bring up neat as well, like in terms of like just like focusing more on your overall activity, like just non exercise type of, of activity that you're doing. It's such a more effective approach, uh, you know, to get that change because it's not invasive. It's not something like, I think a lot of people think of when they need to change their body, it has to be this, this hard push and this constant hard push where I need, I need to, to do cardio. I need to do crazy cardio for like an hour, an hour and a half, uh, and, and, and really rigorous cardio. No, it's so much more effective to to that point, like I've seen the same thing in terms of the activities and trends of people just being up and moving and, and washing dishes and, uh, you know, going for like light walks and things that are just very reasonable, but it's, it's frequent throughout your day. You're going to have much better success. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we're talking about basically knowing these, your numbers, figuring out your calories burn. That way you can figure out what to eat. And here's the thing. This isn't something that you need to necessarily follow and track forever. Okay. I talked earlier about walking in a dark room, being blindfolded and knowing your calories, figuring out those estimates, figuring out how much you need to eat. That's like turning the light on, taking off the blindfold. Now you can see where you need to go. But if you walk that room enough times, just like in my bedroom at my house. Okay. If you turn the lights off in my bedroom, I could find my bed. I could find the bathroom. I could find where my socks are, my underwear, are all in the dark. When you do this enough times, you start to learn these things about yourself. But this is a very essential first step. This is a good first step. Now, what if you've been you know, doing this for a long time and you think you know your numbers, but it's been five years since you calculated and figured out your calories burned? It might be a good time to pick it up again. Yeah. It might be a good time to figure it out again. I know my body pretty well, but every you know two years or so, maybe even every year, I start to calculate things out a little bit because... My lifestyle changes, you know, mm -hmm. my workouts change a little bit and I start to reset where I need to go. Now you can figure out things like TDEE and BMR. There are calculators online. We put one up specifically, we put up one up online because a lot of the ones we see online are not super accurate. They're very, very general. 
we put one up that's a little bit more accurate. It's at mapsmacro.com. Uh, so that way you can go and kind of figure that out. But there's a little more to that. You also want to figure out what those calories should be made up of because it's not just about calories. There's also what those calories are made up of. The next block to figure out are known as macronutrients. The first one we'll start with is protein. Now, protein's very important for anybody who wants to change the way their body looks. Now, besides being an essential uh, macronutrient, meaning you have to consume a certain amount of protein every single day or your body will fail to thrive. Okay, that means that your body, because your body can can make certain amino acids, that's what proteins are made up of. It can make some of them, but some of them it just can't make. You have to consume them. They're known as essential amino acids. And if you don't eat them, your body will literally cease to function. So protein is imp so important. You have to eat some. doesn't matter who you are. But the reason why it's so important for weight loss and muscle gain is because for weight loss, it's muscle sparing. So if you eat a high-protein diet, and you're eating low calories, you're going to lose less muscle. Or if you're lifting weights, you may keep or maybe even build a little bit of muscle. It also sat, uh, is satiating. It helps with appetite control. And if for anybody who's ever cut their calories, they know that the biggest enemy is you know, getting hungry. Mm -hmm. Well, a high-protein diet tends to, sat to, to satisfy that more than fat and, and carbohydrates. Um, and then for muscle building. For muscle building, it's very important because proteins are what your body turns into muscle. And this is what I make clients always focus on first uh, because of that. Yes. Because one, it is essential. You made the case for that already. But most people, if you are trying to lose body fat or build muscle, it plays such a huge role in the success of that for the reasons that you just said right mm -hmm. now. You do not just build muscle out of thin air. You need the building blocks for that, and protein is essential for that. So it's essential to live, and then it's also essential to build muscle. Right. You're not If you don't eat any protein and you think you're going to go build muscle, it ain't going to happen. So that is something that you have to do for that. And most people that I train, and we're not talking about my bodybuilding clients, most average people that I've trained are grossly under eating this macronutrient. So when I first get somebody to like work on a macro calculator like this, and then we start to figure out where their calories are, the next first thing I focus on is, okay, let's just really focus on you targeting that number that you need for protein, and then we'll get to the carbs. Totally. Mm -hmm. I would say eight or nine out of uh, every 10 clients that I ever trained did well on a high, did better on a high protein diet. Eight or nine. Now the one or maybe two, probably one out of ten that uh, wouldn't do as well on a high protein diet, just because they would start to get some digestive issues. In, in which case, we would lower the protein until their digestion felt good. But the vast majority, a high. I don't care if their goal was to lose weight or their goal was to gain weight. I don't care if it was to build strength or get shredded and burn body fat. A high protein diet, nine out of ten times helped in all those ways we talked about. Helped with appetite, helped with building or keeping muscle, helped keep the metabolism fast. Here's one of the problems with cutting your calories when you're when you're trying to burn body fat. As you lower calories, your body tries to learn how to burn less calories because it tries to match the calories coming in. One of the beautiful, amazing things about your body is that it evolved to 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 be moldable. It, it, it evolved to be uh, to adapt. So when your calories are low coming in, your body tries to slow its metabolism burn down to try to match that. Well, a high protein diet along with resistance training on a calorie deficit diet, meaning low calories, when you combine high protein with resistance training and low calories, the metabolism slowdown is greatly reduced. It's greatly reduced. It's a much lower impact. And in my in my experience when I've trained especially beginners, when I've done it this way, sometimes I even get their metabolism to speed up a little bit. Sometimes I cut their calories and then have to bring their calories up a little bit because the diet and the resistance training actually sped their metabolism up. Now, the best sources of protein are animal sources. Okay, I don't care what the the vegan uh, you know documentaries say. Yes, you can get protein from vegan sources. Yes, you'll be fine with vegan sources of protein. But if you want to pick the best sources of protein in terms of amino acid profile and ability of your body to assimilate and use them, the studies are pretty conclusive. Animal sources are the best, meaning that you know 30 grams of animal protein tends to be superior to 30 grams of vegan protein. Now, you can definitely get decent vegan sources, especially when they're blended, especially when you have different, type, different vegan sources because they complement each other. But typically, if you want to reap the benefits of a high-protein diet um, and you're not eating animal sources, you probably need a little bit more protein just to make up the difference. Best sources of protein, 
red meat, chicken, eggs, eggs, if you can tolerate them, um, have some of the best uh, amino acid profiles, meaning they have the best uh, constituents um, that make up the proteins, um, the best balance. Uh, dairy is an excellent uh, also source of protein. And if you are somebody that struggles with getting enough protein, protein powders uh, can help a lot. Now, what is high protein? High protein is about 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of body weight. I like to do this. I like to tell people this. Aim for 1 gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. So in other words, get your body fat percentage, subtract your body fat, now eat 1 gram per pound of that. So, you know, I might, for example, for me, my my lean body mass, I might be sitting at 185 pounds uh, of lean body mass. I'm going to aim for 185 grams of protein every day, regardless of whether or not I want to gain or lose weight. And what makes this actually, it sounds a little complicated, like if you've never done this before, but that this is why... and. By the way, we've been talking about this for a while. Of all the projects that Mind Pump has worked on, uh, this is, has to be the largest year to date, right? Or for, since we've started Mind Pump, is building out this this pillar page. So it's got a a plethora of information that we're talking about. So if there's things that we're saying right now, and you want deeper, more information, not only when you go to the the calculator page that Sal already mentioned. But there's also all kinds of links and more free content around these topics so you can learn about it. And when you go and you enter in your body fat percentage and your weight, it will figure this out for you. So it'll tell you your lean body mass, right. and then you just plug in the the, the, the amount of grams of protein. There's a it'll little, tell you how many calories to eat based yes. on your goal. It's it'll, got a nice little slider on there and everything, so you can manipulate it a little bit if you want to be a little lower or a little bit higher, and it does all the math for you, so you, it makes it very, very easy and user-friendly. Yeah, we have calculators on there that'll tell you your your give you a good estimate of your basal metabolic rate, and we'll give you an estimate of your uh, total daily energy expenditure, so you can kind of figure out how many calories you're burning uh, every single day, and then figure out how many grams of proteins, fats, and carbs, and calories. Speaking of which, uh, we talked about proteins. The next, I would say, most important macronutrient uh, are fats. Like protein, fats are essential. There are essential fatty acids that you have to consume in food, otherwise your body will also fail to thrive. So that mm -hmm. means you cannot go on a zero-fat diet. You yeah. can't do that. You, you just, saw, have you guys ever seen that show uh, Alone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. So this guy, like, he killed a, a, a moose, which, you know, that's a ton of meat. That could last you like an entire year. But he stripped it down of like all this this fat. And, and a wolverine came and took all the fat. And he ended up like basically starving yes. while he had all this excess of meat. So it is an essential thing your body needs to you know, as a building block for, for everything. Oh yeah. Hunters in the, in the old days in the Midwest, um, they would, they would go crazy, lose their mind, sometimes die because all they would be able to hunt and, and kill sometimes were lean jackrabbits. So they weren't able to get enough fat in right. their, in their diet. All they had was protein. And, um, some of them, you literally starve to death. You have to have fat in your diet just to survive. Well, these the analogies you guys just brought up are extreme analogies, but I remember uh, this was especially in the, the first five years of my career because we were still right in the thick of the low-fat thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, that when everything was being marketed to us was low-fat, low-fat, oh, low-fat. Right. And now this, I saw this both in male and female, but I saw it really bad in my in my female clients. And I could and I did. This was before I I knew all of this, and I was still bought into the low fat type of diet too. And I had a lot of clients. I had a lot of female clients that had hormone issues, mm. and it was because they were eating such a low fat diet that they had all these problems going on. And I just assumed like, man, I just keep getting these ladies that. I've got hormone issues. That's so weird. Is that just that common? I didn't know that what was causing it for so many of these women that I was training was that they were grossly under consuming fats. And that was one of the first like game changers for me was piecing that all together. And then after I figured out protein, the, just like you said, this is the next place I go is, okay, now let's look at your fat and make sure you're getting adequate grams of, pro, uh, adequate grams of fat per day because of the hormonal benefits. And what I would notice right away, I mean, they would see things in their, their hair, their skin yep their yeah. mood would it would be better so they would energy would come up right away they'd be sleeping better strength we'd be putting on all these things started to happen just by me like hitting a client and going like oh let's just boost your mm -hmm. 20 more grams of fat as it would be almost double of what they're used to eating. if you'd be eating 25 grams 30 grams of fat in a day me giving them 50 would be like a huge game changer in my experience most people do do best if they're fat 
as a percentage of their calories doesn't go below 20%, 15% at the lowest. Okay, so if you're looking at your total calories, try not to eat less than maybe 20, 15% at the lowest. If you're somebody that, that tends to thrive off of higher carbs, wants a little bit less fat, 15% would be the lowest, I'd say. But about 20% for most of my clients is what they did best. Now, if you're having trouble figuring this out again, you can go to the, our site, Maps Macro. Uh, dot com, and then what you do is you when you when it figures out your calories, you can slide the percentage so you can say okay twenty percent fat uh, from my calories that's what my fat grams are going to be. But remember, fat very important for hormone production and health, nerve production and health. Your brain your brain thrives off of fats. It's built off of fats. They're very very important. Good sources of fat, healthy animal sources of fat are perfectly fine. Eggs are perfectly fine. Dairy is perfectly fine. But you also have great uh, vegan sources of fat, avocados, coconut uh, oil, nuts and seeds, um, olive oil, also excellent, excellent sources of healthy fat. The best sources of fat, in my opinion, uh, come from fish. Uh, fish have some amazing fatty acid profiles. I had so much success with increasing my client's uh, fat intake early on, and it was such a game changer for me that what I started to do was, okay, still, we, we made protein the number one macro first we focused on. We nailed that down, and that was n roughly 20% of their intake. Then what I would do is I would actually play with the remaining percentage, the other 80%, and I would divide it with carbs and fat. Yep, totally. And let them play. Like sometimes I'd say, hey, let's have let's have more carbs today and see how you feel. And then let's get feedback. So let's let you have, you know, 60% of the intake come from carbohydrates and only 20% come from fat. And then the next day I'd say, hey, let's do 60% fat mm -hmm. and only 20% carbs. And I would I would ask for my client to give me feedback. How did you feel? How was your workout? How was your sleep? And like trying to help them connect that. And what I found was a lot of my clients actually thrived in a nice, more even split and did really, really well. Like Unless they were like an athlete where they needed a lot of that quick sugar from carbohydrates, most of my clients actually did really well by dividing the percentage up between uh, fats and carbs Agreed. for the yeah. rest of the makeup of their calories. And that's what's cool about this calculator is you you can slide that, right? You can slide it, but it makes it really easy for you to say, okay, well, let's today, let's try me having a higher percentage of fat and you just slide it up five or 10%. And it'll take it away from the other it'll one. It'll take it away from the carbs and then it'll naturally give you the calorie. It's super cool how this works and it really helps you by yourself. If you don't have a coach, you don't have a trainer who's doing your diet for you, it'll teach you how you can manage and manipulate that and I and personally I do this all the time where I I notice that on days when I'm not training I like to have higher fat days and I do that because it satiates me more and it doesn't kick and I don't need the the quick fuel because I'm not exercising right and I'm more sedentary on the days you're not training right yeah. I actually like which is seems counter right because most people would think oh god you're not moving around very much maybe lower fat that day mm. no not at all I actually like more fat on the days that I'm not moving as much. I'm not exercising and lower carbohydrates. On my days when I'm training hard or I'm going for a big hike mm -hmm. or something like that, that's when I allow more carbohydrates because I want that quick fuel because I'm going to be exercising and I feel better that way. So that's what's neat about this calculator is you guys have the ability to manipulate that up and down to figure out what your body feels best. Totally. Now, uh, we talked about carbs. Let's get into carbs here. Now, carbohydrates are not essential. Okay, That means you could go the rest of your life without eating a single carbohydrate. It wouldn't be ideal, but you'd be fine. Your body would function just fine. It could produce all of the you know, glucose that it needs through the amino acids and fats that you'll be consuming. It'll, it can produce energy through the fats, through something known as ketones. So you don't have to eat carbs at all in order to survive. But does that mean that you shouldn't? And I'm going to say no. I'm going to say, sure, sure, some people do well on very, very low carbohydrate diets, but most people don't. Carbohydrates- Not uh, long term. No, not long term. Most people perform best when they have some carbohydrates. If you want to build muscle, very hard to do in my experience. Again, this is with training lots of people. And I'm not saying this is true for everybody, but for most of the people I've worked with, uh, it's very hard to build muscle and strength on a very, very low uh, carbohydrate diet. Very, very low carbohydrate diets can also cause hormone problems in some people. 
It can cause uh, cortisol issues in, uh, in women. It can, believe it or not, cause insulin issues. You think, oh, insulin will be good on low carbohydrates, but sometimes being too low all the time causes you to become so sensitive that you eat the slightest bit of carbohydrate and you, it looks like you have uh, diabetes. So every once in a while throwing in carbohydrates is a good idea there as well. And that's you have to keep this into consideration because I know it's, and I'm glad you went this direction, Sal, because the, the ketogenic diet and the carnivore diet is so popular right now. Right. And there's people that are raving all about it. And hey, you know what? If it works for you and that's a lifestyle you like to live long term, that's fine. But you got to be careful because if you get used to that, you teach your body to actually utilize different sources of fuel. And then if all of a sudden you have a, a, a weekend or a birthday come up. It's going to tip the scale like yes, crazy. Yes. And yeah. you splurge on carbohydrates, you know, just this one day, but because you've been so consistent with having zero, little to none, mm. and then all of a sudden you have a day to go over, now your body ends up piling that on more than it would had you been used to being able to metabolize carbohydrates. Oh, the biggest, the biggest swings I've ever seen in my entire life uh, with, with clients were the ones that went from no carb or low carb diets to then trying to eat a more ba balanced diet and then just going so way off. Mm -hmm. And you see their weight whoo, go in the opposite direction because th those carbs triggered such a strong hunger response. They start out holding water um, and they and their bodies didn't respond very well to it because it was all at once. So yeah, it's a little extreme to go low or no carb long term. There's even some studies that show that sometimes women can have thyroid issues from going low carb mm. for too long. So there are some cases where low or no carb is, is perfectly fine. I know there are people with gut health issues right. that do well with this, some autoimmune issues that do well. Um, aging populations, they get cognitive performance boosts when their carbs are real low and their fats are real high. So I'm not saying this is true for everyone, but for most people, you want to have some, you know, carbohydrates. Well, in your diet. I think too, that's where you need to do some detective work personally and kind of like cycle through like the different variations of carbohydrates, which ones, you know, are best for you to digest. And I know that that's a, that's a big factor in performance as well is like how well I can digest this food. Yep. And if I have like any reaction, if I have any bloat, anything else that, you know, I, I sort of get as a byproduct of that. So, uh, you know, carbs themselves, they, you know, they're, they're not the demons that, uh, you know, a lot of these other like uh, you know methods are, are are promoting. It's just a matter of like how your individual body is going to respond. Right now, carbs can for me they are they're a trigger for hunger. So I know when I'm trying to get leaner, I don't tend to go zero carb, but I'll go lower carb mainly because it helps control my appetite. Carbohydrates should increase; they tend to make me hungrier. But if I'm trying to build muscle, I use that to my advantage and I eat a little bit more carbs to to boost my appetite. And of course, I said earlier I do notice strength gains. Now, the best sources of carbs are the unprocessed sources of carbohydrates, the ones that don't come in a box or a bag or a wrapper. Um, fruits are fine. Starchy vegetables, fine. White rice is my favorite source of carbohydrate. It's very, very easy for me to digest. It's, you know... Uh, Gluten-containing carbs sometimes cause people problems. I know they do for me, mm -hmm. so I tend to stay away from breads and cereals and pastas that contain gluten. But for other people, um, those are, are, are perfectly fine. Um, in my experience training clients, um, rice and potato and sweet potato tend to be the easiest digesting kind of best sources of carbohydrates. Fruits are good too, but in my experience, you can overdo fruit. And I don't mean it in the sense that they're bad for your health. I mean, in terms of uh, digestion, you ever eat a ton and ton of fruit all at once, you know exactly what I'm talking so about. So the hack for fruit for me was uh, learning about the, the different types of fruits, the benefits that come from them and figuring out how to recommend that client. So I would tell clients that like really enjoy fruit, uh, want it in their diet. I like it in their diet. It's good. I, I like berries. I would tell them- Oh, high fiber. Huh? Yes. It's high fiber, high antioxidants, low calorie. Mm -hmm. So it's like the triple threat for you. Like when you- you dabble in things like apples, bananas, pears, all these things are great watermelons, but you, you, you don't get nowhere near the bang for your buck when you consume those fruits. And so I'm not going to demonize or say those ones aren't, aren't, aren't good. They're good. They're fine, but you get way more value from going after berries. And so I would typically push clients towards uh, the berries when they're eating fruits. And maybe we have the occasional apple, pear, things like right. that as a, like a treat for them. But their their staple fruit in their diet would be all the different types of berries I found the most value. Right. So quick recap, figure out your goal. You want to gain or you want to lose. Determine what your calories burned are so you know how many calories to consume. Figure out your protein. Uh, high protein works best for most people. And then fats and carbs, you can you can mess with those a little bit. There are essential amount of fats that you need to eat, but aside from that, 
you can play around with it a little bit. Now, if you go to mapsmacro.com, we have different macro calculators. We have calculators that can tell you your BMR, your total daily energy expenditure. Then we have ones that'll just tell you, here's the calories you need to eat. Here's what your proteins need to be at. Here's what your fats need to be at. Here's where your carbohydrates are at. Set the protein to one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass, and then have fun messing with the carbs and the fats and see how you feel, see how you respond. And then here's my next piece of advice. Follow those numbers and based on how your body responds, tweak them to make them as individualized as possible because there's always an individual variance. The most uh, accurate calculators in the world, and I believe the ones that we have on our site are some of the best ones. We really did our, our due diligence in figuring out the best algorithms. No matter how accurate they are, there's always an individual variance. So as you're following the guidelines and you're watching your weight on the scale change and your body change, if things are happening too fast, bump your calories up or change things around based on how you feel because at the end of the day, nutrition is extremely, extremely uh, individualized. Um, and look, Mind Pump is audio and video recorded. So you may be listening to us uh, through your headphones or in your car, but you can actually watch us on YouTube as well. Go to YouTube Mind Pump Podcast. Look Go check that out. I mentioned the macro calculators we have. That's at mapsmacro.com. And then if you want to check us out on Instagram, you can find all of us. Uh, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug at Mind Pump Doug.